I'm Alexandra Witsey. I'm a contributing editor for Science News Magazine. I've got a background in geosciences. I have a uh, bachelor's in geology from MIT. And after I got that, I realized I didn't want to go and work in oil and gas. I worked for the Dallas Morning News, which was one of the top ten newspapers in the country at the time. Uh, I've worked for really specialized journals like Nature. I was an editor at Nature for about five years. So I've covered journalism from the you know very specialized to the very general. I think the, the thing you learn as a journalist is the same thing you learn as a scientist when you're talking to your first journalist is just how different the, the deadlines and the level of information is. I mean, my first first internship at a newspaper, um, having not worked at my school paper or anything like that, it's absolutely like being thrown off the deep end. And I think scientists probably feel that way too when they're talking to a journalist. Suddenly they have to do everything really super fast and speak in really super easy language, uh, convey their message really quickly because you just don't have time to think about your monograph for eight months before you file it. You've got to you know, figure out what your message is and get it across. Pretty much everything journalists ask scientists to do to go outside the comfort zone. I mean, the, the usual things that, that journalists will tell you about, I mean, being able to respond quickly and, and clearly, um, being able to provide the names of people who might not agree with your work but who can provide valuable context. Um, I have sort of a standard set of questions that I run through for almost every interview, which are, you know, how did you get into this work? What did you find? Why is it important? What are you doing next and how is this going to change you know, the, the field that you work in? The primary example of, of please don't ask a journalist this is ask to review copy. Scientists often argue, well, what I do is technical, it's complex, you're going to get it wrong, the headline's going to be wrong, the caption's going to be wrong, you're going to put somebody's name in wrong. If you spend enough time with the journalists, if you provide them with the information they need, the story that comes out is going to be you know, accurate and fair. Everybody has their share of bloopers, and you know, I like as much as the next person to collect you know, sort of embarrassing headlines that have ended up on my stories. Um, but they're not going to kill anyone. Um, it's a fundamental principle of journalism is independent, fair, and accurate reporting. And that does not include reviewing copy by sources. What I'd say to a scientist who feels burned is, I mean, everybody has different experiences. And first of all, I totally empathize with being burned. I mean, we all have heard these horror stories. But I don't think that means I should turn you off media forever. I mean, all journalists are different. All publications are different. Even over time, things evolve. I mean, there's a whole world of science communication out there right now with the blogosphere that didn't exist you know, 15 years ago. So if you're uncomfortable maybe going on camera with your local ABC affiliate, you know, try writing an op-ed piece for your local newspaper instead, or start a blog, or do, you know, delve back into that world of science communication and talking to the media, and it maybe in a different way. Um, I also really recommend that scientists read a lot, because I'm kind of surprised at how many don't read a publication before they grant an interview to a journalist with that publication. So look them up on their website, see what kinds of things they cover, see what kinds of stories this journalist does cover before you call them back. It just gives you a sense where they're coming from and what they do. So again, don't tar everybody with the same brush, I would say. You know, if, you, if you've had a bad experience with one reporter, call their competitor next time you've got a scoop.